Mr. Holman, I'm a father. Do you have children? How can you possibly allow this to happen under your watch? Do you not care? Is it because these children don't look like children that are around you? I don't get it. Have you ever held a deceased child in your arms? First of all, your comments are disgusting. I've served my country. I find your I've served my, co I've served well, my country for 34 I find, years. I find your this comments is, this is out of control. as well. I've served my country for 34 years. And yes, I held a five-year-old boy in my arms that, in back of that tractor trailer. I knelt down beside him and said a prayer for him because I knew what his last 30 minutes of his life were like. And I had a five-year-old son at the time. What I've been trying to do my 34 years serving my nation is to save lives. So for you to sit there and insult my integrity and my love for my country and for, the, and for children, that's why this whole thing needs to be fixed. And you're the member we of Congress. We agree on that. Fix it. We agree on that. But I disagree. But I also oh, no, disagree oh, well, with your not characterization not the gentleman, of immigrants. The gentleman, the gentleman, the people for three decades on this gentleman time has expired. Joining me now is that gentleman, Tom Homan, former acting director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement. He's also a Fox Business contributor. Director Homan, um, thank you for being with us. Uh, it was quite a day today. Uh, the treatment of you was nothing short of appalling. In particular, Jesus Garcia, who accused you of being racist, which is what uninformed people do when they don't have a good argument. It appears to me that Representative Garcia is the racist here, and you were clearly, and said so, disgusted by it. How many lives have been saved? by Border Patrol agents, sir? Just this past year, they saved over 4,000 lives, but no one wanted to talk about that today. I was the only one wanted want to talk about it. And yes, I was insulted by him and many others. Representative uh, Gerald Connolly from Virginia. You know, he threw out dirt and, and wouldn't let me respond. This is about political theater. He ran out of there like a little girl. He's a coward, and he didn't want to hear my response because this was all political theater. These people don't want the American people to hear the truth. I said several times in this hearing, this is about transparency, but you won't let me respond to what you're saying. If, 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 this, if this is a focus of Congress to push a false narrative and not let someone like me who spent 34 years on that border to speak to the issue, that, that tells you what this is all about. This is about resisting this president. This is about open borders. They don't want to hear the truth. Well, and I commend you for, for saying that they should be ashamed of themselves. Indeed, they should. You know... A director for the longest time, uh, mostly Democrats were saying, oh, there's no problem at the border. There's no crisis at the border. It's all a manufactured crisis. Well, now they've changed their tune, haven't they? Absolutely. And they're saying, oh, they're talking about the appalling conditions in detention. And I, and I was clear to them. I said, that's because you failed. The Secretary of Homeland Security, along with the head of the board, which has been asking for months for supplemental funding to move people that, women and children, these, the, the Border Patrol facilities aren't built for them. They've been begging them for money to move into an HHS bed, but they just kept denying them and denying them and denying them. Even after they finally did approve the funding, you got people like Alexander Ocasio-Cortez that didn't support the funding to make the conditions better. And she's still talking about detention conditions on the southwest border. And, and, and we wouldn't have any of this. There wouldn't be conditions on the southwest border that, that would be unwelcoming to these women and children. If they would have done their job and closed the loopholes, we've asked them to close for two years. Yeah. You mentioned uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez today, who demanded that she be sworn in to testify, which seemed to confuse the chairman because, you know, that's not normally what happens since you're a member of Congress. I want to play a clip and then get your reaction. Here it is. If I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separated that Mr. father Mr. Holman, with all due respect, legal asylees are not charged with any crime. When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, you go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Okay. Unlawful presence in the United States is, is not a crime, but you are correct, sir, that coming into the United States illegally is a crime. Sneaking across the border is a crime. 
So AOC was engaging in her <laughs> typically inane comments. And, and, you know, and she's the one who continues to decry conditions at the border, and yet she voted hell no uh, when it came time for a 4. Point, uh, I think it was 4.5, $4.6 billion in funding to relieve the conditions at the border. She's nothing but a hypocrite, correct? Oh, absolutely. And look, every time she opens her mouth, she's wrong. I mean, I've never heard her speak one time on immigration and she'd be accurate. I mean, I'm a career law enforcement officer, but it's, 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 it's astounding, that, astounding that a member of Congress, a legislator, does not realize entering this country is a crime. She ought to do her homework before she starts getting on her podium and, and, and saying things that aren't true. She, she, she's, she's the worst politician in that committee. And, you know, she, she, she doesn't know fact from fiction. And, you know, she's been a congressman for six months. Apparently, she's an expert at everything, but she's an expert at nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was a bartender uh, less than a year ago. Not that I have anything against people like uh, bartenders and waitresses and so forth. But, you know, it doesn't make you an expert on everything. You know, most freshman members of Congress come in and they, they know enough to keep their mouths shut, to learn, observe, to listen. But, no, she's, she's an expert on everything. I uh, want to go to a moment now where you were showing photographs of children and elderly people who had been victimized violently by illegal immigrants. Uh, talk to us about that. There is a, uh, you know, they talked about family separation during the zero tolerance thing. And of course, it's, it's, it's sad when a child separated from a parent, but the parents being prosecuted. And that happens to American families every day. And the separations, even though unfortunate, it's a necessary part of the legal system. If you and I got arrested tonight, as you said in an early clip, for DUI and we have a child in the car, we're going to go to jail and that child's going to go to CPS. That happens to American families every day. But they want a different set of rules for illegal aliens. So I wanted to show, I brought my own pictures of separations. These were children that were killed by illegal aliens that some were released from sanctuary cities or some were because of the open borders and abolish, you know, all the talk that Democrats have. So I show a couple examples. One was a five-month-old baby that was raped, sexually penetrated by an illegal alien and died, was murdered. Another five-year-old little girl that was raped and murdered. A 93-year-old lady that was uh, raped multiple times and murdered. So I want to show, you know what? I agree, child separations, are, are sad, but th that's a temporary separation because of parents being prosecuted. Here's some separations that are forever. These parents will never see these children again, and they died a horrific death. So if you want to shed tears for, you know, those separations, I get it. But how about shedding some tears for U.S. citizens that have been murdered, children have been murdered uh, uh, by the illegal aliens? I've met with these angel moms and dads. Every story's tragic, and, and, you, and you, you never get used to hearing them, but they don't want to talk about that. They right. want to keep pushing their false narrative to the American people, and I wasn't going to allow it today. I wasn't going to allow it. And Representatives Tlaib and Pressley, Tlaib was in tears today, you know, yeah. because using the term illegal immigrant uh, is derogatory and demeaning, uh, and she seemed to be blaming you and others, and yet she... You know, she's so dumb she doesn't realize it's actually in the law that Congress yeah. wrote illegal aliens and you cited the statute and there's another one as well she ought to look them up if she wants to change that language she ought to change it herself she's a member of congress congress created that law with that language absolutely there's another congressman who doesn't know the law i mean illegal alien is clearly spelled out not only title a the united states code the immigration nationality act which i can say was enacted by congress which she's a part of. Right. Do your homework. Before you get out there and attack this administration, attack the men and women of ICE and the Border Patrol, do your homework. At least do that so you can be accurate, truthful right. American people. Don't, don't you know? You know, Mr. Chair, I was looking, how did we get to this point? How did we get to this point where we take children out of mothers' and fathers' arms? And, uh, you know, it, it dated back, family separation in the way that we have seen it, where we take children away from their parents without due process, began last year under Secretary Kirsten Nielsen. But I had to dig further, and our staff dug further. But where did this start within the administration? She implemented it. And we found a memo 
dates back to April 23rd of 2018, where there was an official recommendation to, quote, pursue prosecution of all amenable adults who cross our border, quote, illegally, even though this applied to legal asylum seekers in practice, including those presenting with a family unit between ports of entry in coordination with DOJ. Here is the memo that I would like to submit to the congressional record. And so I looked at this memo, and it seems like this is the source of it. And it seems as though, Mr. Homan, that you are the author. It says here, from yourself, Kevin Michalinen, and Francis Cisna. Is this correct? Did you sign the memo? I'd have to see what you yeah, give me. I'd be happy to provide it. Um, and we'll provide it over. But I would like to note that here it says the official recommendation. There were three different options presented. The third included the option for family separation. This initiative would pursue prosecution of all amenable adults, including those presenting with a family unit. Mr. Homan, your name is on this. Is this correct? Yes, I signed that memo. So you are the author of the family separation policy? I am not the author of this memo. You're not the author, but you signed the memo? Yes, a, so, zero, a zero tolerance memo. So you provided the official recommendation to Secretary Nielsen on family, for the United States to pursue family separation? I gave Secretary Nielsen numerous recommendations on how to secure the border and save lives. But it says here that you, re you gave her numerous options, but the recommendation was option three, family but, separation. What I'm saying, this is not the only paper where we've given the Secretary numerous options to secure the border and save lives. And so the recommendation of the many that you recommended, you recommended family separation. I recommended zero tolerance. Which includes family separation. The same as is whenever a U.S. citizen parent gets arrested when they're with a child. Zero tolerance was interpreted as the policy that separated children from their If parents. I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separated that Mr. father Holman, from his Mr. Holman, with family. all due respect, legal asylees are not charged with any crime. When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Okay. Mr. Chair, the, the, the memo is, um, is submitted to the record for review.